Well, good morning and welcome to Hope's Point Baptist Church Midweek Minute. We continue our little series that we began a couple of weeks ago out of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1 through uh, verse 10. And uh, we had looked at key words already that uh, just kind of left from the page when I was reading this in preparation for a sermon a couple of weeks ago and uh, how it just immediately resonated with me of its connection uh, to what is taking place in our culture uh, all around us today in America. And we've already looked at uh, the word of uh, deception and the word uh, destruction that is identified uh, with this uh, entity, uh, this uh, spiritual force that is work in our world today. And today we're going to pick up with the word defiance. And uh, I'll not refer to defiance so much. I'm using that to alliterate the points, which means each starts with a D, easier to remember, uh, deception, destruction, defiance. But uh, this is a very important one. In fact, it's right off of today's headlines, really. And when we look at this, we find this word mentioned four times, or at least the Greek equivalent of it. Let's begin reading in uh, chapter 2 of Second Thessalonians and in verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, that day of the return, the advent of Jesus Christ, his second coming to earth unless the fallen away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, uh, the son of perdition. The man of sin, that word sin there uh, is translated lawlessness. He is the man of lawlessness. So we see here in verse three that there is a, 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 a personality, a spiritual personality that embodies uh, this spirit of lawlessness, lawlessness we know him as the Antichrist. But we also know that there is a spiritual principle that is activated in the world through his influence, through both supernatural and natural uh, persons that uh, work in cooperation with him. In fact, if you look back to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, we find these words written, little children speaking to us as believers, it is the last hour. Uh, Jesus is coming soon. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. He is coming, this, this specific personality. But then he lets us know that there are, are spiritual uh, powers in place already. And when he says, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were with us. And, and so what is going on here is uh, the reality that uh, we are combating uh, spiritual forces in this world as believers. And that Satan has a plan for mankind that is diametrically opposed to the plan of Jesus Christ for mankind uh, kind through the redemptive gospel that he makes possible for all of us through his death, burial, and resurrection. So we see then that there are many antichrists. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12 says, Brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So we see then that we are engaged in an epic battle. And of course, John went on to explain, uh, we'll not go back to there, that, that our, we combat these forces of evil uh, through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Scriptures. And that's why I've really appealed to you in these dark days and challenging days in which we live, please get into God's word. 
Uh, God's word reveals the truth in our life. The Holy Spirit is there as a revealer of truth. You say, well, I can't understand my Bible. Well, get connected to some good Bible teachers, but uh, mainly rely upon the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life to help you in this. Because in uh, verse seven, uh, it says here, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. This is 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. The spirit or the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now, most Bible scholars believe that uh, primarily this is uh, speaking of the Holy Spirit's role of restraining uh, the forces of evil and uh, the person and the power of the Antichrist. And of course, uh, we can couple with that with the presence of, of the church on this planet with individual Christians. Uh, some even bring in law enforcement with this, ordained by God, Romans chapter 13. But we see that, uh, that this is a hidden truth. And, uh, but we as believers have opportunity to know the truth to live by the truth and to combat the forces of evil with the truth. In John chapter 14, verse 17, Jesus said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells in you and will be with you. This is the Holy Spirit that he said would come uh, to indwell us and empower us as he ascended back into heaven. And we saw that played out in Acts chapter one and two. In John 15, 26, and when the helper is come, speaking of the Holy Spirit, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And I love his prayer in John 17. We talk about uh, the Lord's prayer from Matthew six, but but in reality, this that was a model prayer for the disciples at their request, but his prayer, Jesus, uh, earthly intercessory prayer so beautifully recorded in John 17 on the eve of his betrayal and of course his trial, his crucifixion, death, burial, and then eventually his resurrection. And speaking of us, he says in John 17 verses 14 through 19, I have given them your word and the world the world has hated them because they are not of the world. We're not of this world. Uh, just as I am not of the world, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. And uh, they are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them or set them uh, apart by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. Listen to these poignant words. This, this is the great commission unfolding. This is Jesus' plan and purpose for you and I as believers. The church corporately is to represent him in this world with the truth of God's word, empowered by the spirit of God that he has sent to enable us to do what we can't do in our own strength. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may all be sanctified by the truth. What's at the heart of the conflicts that are taking place in our world today? I, I'm going to have to do this in a couple of parts because I'll run out of time quickly. Uh, but it's so poignant. It's in the headlines today. Uh, we're reading so much about this, this, uh, this rage and ravenous lawlessness that is sweeping our land. And uh, in, in James chapter four, verses one through 12, it says, where do wars and fight, fightings come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot retain. You fight and you war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Uh, he goes on saying, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever there wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives us more grace. 
God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So he's saying there, our conflict with one another cannot be resolved really in human personality, plan, and power because our very nature is conflicting. But he says then the grace of God will enable us. He says, submit to God, resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Do not speak evil one of another, brother. He who speaks evil of brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law that judges the law. But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. That's Jesus Christ. Who are you to judge another? In closing, we see in a mycosm uh, an example as they just closed the uh, uh, chop down and uh, Capitol Hill uh, opposition party, whatever the name was. And I was reading a long article from someone that lived inside there who saw this as an idealistic attempt to uh, bring peace and harmony in a conflicted world and how for a while it was a dream, it was a vision that they said in their own words and they want to remain anonymous, uh, soon became a nightmare. And, and as I read the article, uh, here's some of the things I picked up on it. In Wednesday's early morning hours, Seattle police cleared uh, Capitol Hill uh, opposition protest area, uh, a relatively quiet end to a demonstration that it involved into a party, a garden, a tourist attraction, a tent city, city, a presidential fixation, and eventually the scene of multiple shootings, two of them fatal. And by the way, both of those murders uh, that occurred there uh, amongst the multiple shootings and those wounded were two teenagers. Uh, and she goes on uh, to say that she wanted to be a part of the protest and that was really good for about a week. But the last two weeks has turned into a militant cult. And uh, how it evolved is a case study in human nature, violence, mental illness, homelessness, and the difficulty in imagining and managing a world without law enforcement. Protesters wanted to end police violence uh, by defunding the department by 50%. They argued armed officers shouldn't be called to respond to issues of mental health, homelessness, poverty, etc. But once they created a job free, a uh, police free zone, they immediately had to deal with all those issues and more. And with only uh, their limited uh, experiences and abilities, uh, they, they were quite ineffective. In fact, they readily admitted that we failed. And after the second teenager was murdered. Uh, their their, their self-named group, the Sentinels, that were there to enforce the law <laughs> without the law, uh, gave up and for fear of reprisal, removed their presence. And so we understand in this spirit of lawlessness that, that Satan wants to remove any law enforcement out of the way uh, so that he can bring in his own lawlessness. And uh, I'll pick up here in Romans chapter 13 next week of how God has ordained a, a way to protect us as a free people. But understand this, dear believer, we have the spirit of truth. And we've already been encouraged with the reality that he knows how to protect us and preserve us and use us until his return. So stay faithful, stay in the word, continue to witness. Jesus is coming soon. God bless you.